Good morning, sir. Morning, sir. Morning, ma'am. Good morning. Kanchan? Yes, sir. Kanchan, have a yes. seat. Have a seat. Yes. Kanchan is from Rudra Prayag. Yes. Uttarakhand. Sociology is your optional. Be honors in English. Uh, watching anime, reading novels, especially detective fiction. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, tell me, sign of four, does it remind you of anything? Yes, sir, it does. Uh, it is a novel by uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle hmm. and it features Sherlock Holmes as the detective. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if I talk about uh, the famous film and uh, that film was made uh, with an, uh, a detective which recently that film came, it was the, the novel was written by Agatha Christie. So can you tell me the name of that detective? I'm not aware of the film, but the detective uh, of Agatha Christie is Hercule Poirot. Mm. Uh, and there's also Miss Marple. Yeah, Miss Marple is another uh, character, detective yes. character. Correct. Uh, what is Baker Street? Uh, Baker Street is uh, the, uh, the place where uh, Sherlock Holmes resides. Hmm. And he resides in one of the houses there. Okay. Tell me, if I were to ask you to compare Sachin Tendulkar and Virat Kohli, out of the two, which one would you prefer? I mean, who is better from your point of view, um, in terms of technique, in terms of style? And you have to tell me why you prefer that batsman. Uh, I've not followed cricket as much, but according to what I've uh, seen, hmm. uh, Tendulkar is the one who um, who uh, takes his, uh, takes it easy and he uh, scores according to his own uh, uh, the time, the correct time. Whereas hmm. uh, Virat Kohli is the one who uh, is more aggressive, if I may say uh, that. Hmm. Um, so out of the two. Uh, I, I don't really uh, know which one I would choose okay. uh, because both of them have played very, played very good and they have represented the country in uh, at such uh, international cricket. So I believe both of them are very good. Okay. Uh, Netflix and other digital platforms, they seem to be crossing the line in terms of the content which they are bringing up. Do you think some kind of uh, regulation is necessary in terms of content shown on the OTT platforms? Uh, there is a variety of content on OTT platforms which certainly does cross lines at times. Uh, and the government has also uh, tried to regulate it in a certain manner where uh, there is some sort of self-regulation. They are also, um, the uh, they have also been entitled uh, a ministry, which is the Information Broadcasting Ministry, has been given the charge of uh, the OTT platforms. Apart from that, uh, there are also various mechanisms like they have to uh, uh, they have to uh, show uh, the content. Um, they have to classify the content according to the age, uh, yeah. and there are also grievance redressal mechanism. Yeah. So these are the few me regulatory mechanisms that the government has put in place. But I believe that there is a need for a greater regulation, uh, and. Um, at times, we also see that these OTT platforms do not necessarily, uh, they follow these regulations put up by the government. So there is a need for implementation uh, in, in this field. Okay. Uh, now, here is an observation and I want your views about it. Women officers who joined Indian Administrative Service, they generally are not given the core postings, core departments. They will not get posted in finance or in home or in town country planning or industries. And they are generally relegated to the departments like women and child development, social welfare, backward uh, welfare of the scheduled caste. And they are generally not even offered collectorship in many of the states. How do you react to this situation that even in the superior service, I mean civil service is regarded as the there is still a discrimination against women. Uh, 
I am not aware of any such discrimination, but if you point it out, sir, uh, I believe that there is uh, some sort of glass ceiling which is at place, not just in the private sector, but also in the public sector, as you've just mentioned. Um, and yes, there may be at times when women uh, will be relegated to the, the marginalized positions. Uh, but at the same time, it is uh, necessary to understand that these departments are also uh, very uh, good. For example, you mentioned social welfare and women and child development. So these are the departments where I believe that uh, the compassion of a woman and uh, uh, the experiences of a woman are also more needed. However, the government also has to take into consideration that the women are, uh, they should be treated at par with the men counterparts. And they should be given the responsibilities, like you mentioned, of finance, of home, secretary, etc. Well, good. Very good. One last question I would like to ask you, Kanchan. Your name starts with the letter K. Yes, Can you tell me a value? Value as it figures in Ethics and Values GS4 paper. Can you name a value which starts with the same letter which you have imbibed? That is the first letter of your name, K. I am not able to recall at the moment. Just think. I'm sorry, sir. Okay. No problem. Thank okay. you, sir. Can you some questions from sociology? Yes. Which are the areas of your interest? Um, in terms of the theories of sociology, sir? Anything? Uh, I mean, out of the syllabus. Okay. Theories? What? Whatever. Like, I like theories, uh, Marxism, I also like feminism. And Very well. Okay, so let's talk about Marxism then. Yes, so, what is the basic idea of Marxism and what are the basic concepts? Very briefly. Yes, uh, so, Marxism starts with the premise that, uh, premise of historical materialism. Uh, where he believes that the history has progressed because of the economic determinism. So that is the first thing. Uh, the second is they take a conflict perspective of, uh, of the phenomenon. Uh, so be they believe that everything is there, uh, everything, uh, social, every social phenomenon has a conflict nature to it. So that would be the second. Uh, so he talks of three processes. Uh, which are those three processes and how they culminate in the end of history? There is a um, thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Yes, sir. This the dialectical materialism. Yeah, dialectical materialism. Yes, yes, sir. And this, which is the uh, oldest, the uh, the first stage of the development? It's a primitive communism. Yeah. Followed by? Uh, followed by ancient mode of production. Yeah. Then the feudal and capitalism. Ah, ancient means master slave. Yes, The sir. slave society. Yes, sir. Okay. And what is the uh, last stage when the when the uh, the conflict is resolved? At the final stage, according to Marxist communism, where there would be no state and no private property or uh, private property. Okay. So, he also talks about substructure and superstructure. Yes, sir. What are those things? Um, the substructure is basically the economic infrastructure and above it, uh, above, above it rises the superstructure, which is the other structures of society, for example, religion, politics, etc. Culture, institutions. Institutions. Okay. okay. So, Marx also talks about alienation. So does Weber. What is the difference between the two concepts of alienation? I am aware of the Marxist concept, I am not so much aware of the Weber's concept, sir. Weber also you must have studied. Yes, sir, I have studied, but I, I, I think I have forgotten. Okay, very quickly. The alienation, okay, tell me about Marx. Uh, so, Marx believes that alienation, because of the capitalistic uh, nature of the society, there is alienation at four stages. One is the process alienation, the product alienation, uh, the alienation from the, uh, your own wor your, the other workers, and then alienation from self. Okay. So that is it. And similar thing Weber also talks about because his basic concept is iron cage of rationality, rationality as organizing principle of bureaucracy. bureaucracy. And this bureaucratic structure leads to alienation. Yes. That is it. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Why do you hate IPS? I actually do not hate IPS, sir. I have put it on the 17th preference because uh, I do not have the requisite height for, uh, for the IPS. Or you could have not opted for it. 
I just thought that I would fill all the blanks. So because it gives a different impression that I be believe that you hate uniform. Yes, I hate not. And I was quite surprised because you had appeared for CDS. Yes, sir, I have appeared for CDS. All right. Why is Uttarakhand called Dev Bhumi? Very simple question. Uh, because uh, there are plenty of uh, 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 temples there and the people of uh, Uttarakhand are also more religious. So, so how was Dev Bhumi or so many religious sacred places made Uttarakhand a better place? Uttarakhand is a better place because of its spirituality, its, uh, its inclination towards religion. Then again, because it is uh, in the lap of nature, so the people there are purer. And Suppose, every... yeah, all that is fine. Suppose it was not Dev Bhumi. So many gods had not decided to climb up the hills and make their places there. How would have Uttarakhand been any different? I believe that the natural beauty that Uttarakhand possesses is something that attracts uh, everyone. It would. But without these so many Dev Bhumi, would it have been any lesser place? Uh, the very identity of Uttarakhand comes from Dev Bhumi. So I think it would be a different place if it were not uh, a Dev Bhumi. All right. Can you give us a prognosis of the Ukraine war? Where do you see it? We have completed one year. What do you see Ukraine war one year hence? From the correct sit uh, current situation, I think the Ukraine war is um, is escalating. It's only going to escalate because there is also the, uh, the supply of arms from uh, the Western counterparts as well. And there are also allegations that Chinese are also supporting uh, Russia in the Ukraine war. So I believe that it's, uh, it's going to increase. However, uh, as India has also put forward that uh, it's dialogue and diplomacy that can only be the way forward and war cannot be indef indefinite. You are Consulate General in San Francisco. And those separatist elements, Khalistani put up a flag there. How would you react and what will you do? The first thing would be a communication back to India. And uh, the second uh, thing would be uh, to uh, talk to the, uh, to the people uh, or to the, uh, the, uh, the, the people uh, there and uh, to ask for a proper investigation as to what happened exactly. So that would be the course of action. And to, uh, to uh, stand as a protest uh, against such, uh, such a thing. Okay. You are a student of English. Right? And uh, people want to join IAS because they say that diversity of experience. And they say IAS officers are generalists. Isn't that what they say? So now there is a saying in English and you are a student of English. Rolling stone gather no moss. So are IS officers rolling stones who gather no moss? That's what you want to be? Oh, your first choice is IFS though. Um, I believe that being a generalist, yes, IS considered to be a generalist uh, a profession. Uh, but being a generalist, it gives an opportunity to, uh, to uh, look at various things from different perspectives. So I believe that the freshness that IES, uh, IES provides is something that any other specific provision would not be able to pro provide. Yeah, so that's true. But I'm asking they gather no moss. That's what your English uh, quote says. Rolling stone gather no moss. So they're all the time rolling without adding much to the value, much value to where they are. Uh, I would not agree with this statement uh, because, uh, sir, uh, there is always experience and the IS officers do gain experience through whatever, uh, whatever they... So they gain experience and move to the next place. Uh, then again gain experience over two years and again move to another new place. Uh, so this experience is uh, not something that can be uh, abandoned. It moves with the IAS officer wherever they move. So it does help in uh, administration further. So it is not something that cannot can be abandoned. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. So you have done in sociology? Yes. Okay. What do you understand by social engineering? Um, social engineering is a concept where uh, where there is an attempt to understand society and to uh, to uh, mold society in a better way in in a better structure uh, according to that understanding. So that is uh, the social engineering. August Comte was the one who favored uh, social engineering a lot. Okay. How do you think your knowledge of sociology will be helpful in administration? 
uh, in sociology we study society and we study various uh, uh, different cultures we also study various peoples and their perspectives so that would uh, surely be uh, helpful in administration for example if i, I take a feminist perspective i'd be more uh, inclined towards doing uh, things which uh, a, a, which a woman would want, want me to do and similarly if they if i take a marxist perspective i would be more inclined towards the workers and their predicaments so i believe that would be helpful uh, to gather perspectives and to understand people better okay tell me what do you understand by demographic dividend uh, demographic dividend is uh, um, is uh, the youthful nature of the country in which we can uh, upskill uh, or 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 uh, labor force and we can uh, have uh, the dividend out of that uh, that skilling or human resource development so it's basically focusing on the human resource that india has okay once you are selected what would be three major steps that you would like to take for your state um for my state i think the first problem is that of disaster management so i would want to do some things in that regard um <laughs> secondly i think migration is a major issue uh, people migrate to other cities uh, so that should be halted uh, through uh, through infrastructure development through more connectivity so that would be another thing and the third thing is uh, that of uh, health infrastructure so that needs uh, uh, upgradation in uttarakhand so that is okay just explain to me briefly what is pm's gati shakti program have you heard of it yes ma'am uh, so pm uh, gati shakti program is a um, um, it's a program where 16 ministries would come together and there would be a coordinated effort towards infrastructure development uh, currently they move in silos and that silo would be uh, uh, th this uh, pm gati shakti program uh, tends to coordinate the efforts of all these ministry to better implement infrastructure programs that is gatish okay one thing that you would like to do for women and children which will ameliorate their conditions i'd focus more on the health of women because it is a women who then give birth to children and uh, if the women is healthy then uh, the children would be healthy and then certainly would be able to uh, reap our demographic dividend okay thank you thank you kanchi yes ma'am Why is manufacturing sector in India struggling? Um, the manufacturing sector is struggling primarily because there is more focus on services, which is good. But at the same time, we have neglected our uh, manufacturing sector. Uh, so that is one thing. The second uh, thing is that um, thus, thus we have not been able to skill our workforce according to the needs of the manufacturing sector. There is also a report which says that the employability of the but we had this program called uh, Skill India. what has been the assessment of that program uh, the skill india program uh, it has been moving in various phases uh, so it it has completed a uh, two phase and the third phase uh, has been has it done well has it been impactful uh, i did not have any study to back it up ma'am so i wouldn't be able to say that's all right you're from delhi yes, what do you like about delhi um i like the culture of delhi where it is uh, cosmopolitan it's multicultural all the people come in and uh, there is a kind of uh, everyone uh, blends together so that But is what i think it's unsafe for women and don't you feel delhi police keeps failing itself when uh, a woman gets dragged for half an hour on the road and gets raped don't you think that it's failure of delhi police to be able to protect its its citizens <coughs> Uh, there has been failures of delhi police i would agree to that uh, but at the same time uh, there needs to be a better sensitization of the uh, of the of the police force uh, there needs to be uh, better lightnings uh, the cctv cameras should be uh, working and the there should be more women in uh, the police force and that is through uh, these are the methods to which it can become a more uh, gender sensitive in delhi uh, i see saraswati vihar written on your dash somewhere can you tell me some villages around saraswati vihar i'm sorry ma'am i wouldn't be can you tell me any villages in delhi i'm sorry ma'am i wouldn't be able to it's all right can you tell me any historical monuments you visited in delhi uh, i've visited the red fort um, i've also visited uh, uh, india gate so that's it 
I did visit uh, others, but that was a long while back. Are there any examples of modern architecture in Delhi? The very um, Central Vista is the modern architecture. Coming to Central Vista, do you think there was need of one? We could have spent this money feeding poor, giving education to our children, rather than having a huge building. We already had a parliament, we could have made it functional somehow. Don't you think this is wastage of exchequer's money? Uh, to the extent that I know, ma'am, the parliament building and the area surrounding it was uh, uh, not very suitable for uh, functioning because they, it was the wires were hanging and the infrastructure was not very developed. So I believe there uh, there was a need to redevelop it. And uh, considering that uh, India's population is increasing, uh, the parliament building has also to be uh, more functional because uh, after 2026 there would be more MPs uh, uh, MPs in the parliament building. So there was a need uh, to uh, to restructure the building. Kanchan, you are a student of sociology. My last question to you would be, I want to know your opinion on legalization of prostitution in India and its impact on women. Uh, I'm not aware of the current situation, but uh, I believe that uh, the legalization of uh, prostitution is something which has to be debated because it does have a lot of impact on women where there would be commercialization of uh, women and therefore uh, any step in this direction has to be very gradual because it's ultimately the women who will be affected. Uh, so more debate in this. So are you in favor of legalizing it or are you not? I have not weighed the pros and cons of it as of yet so I wouldn't be able to. Uh, all right. Thank you, Kanchan. Thank you. Kanchan, your mock is over. You will just wait outside for a few moments. We'll call you back for giving the feedback. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Have a seat. Thank you, sir. So, Kanchan, first of all, tell us when is your interview? It's on 28th March. Okay. So you have uh, only about a week left. Okay. This is the first time you have got a call? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And how many mocks have you done so far? I have done around 6-7 mocks. Mm. And any more to go also? Uh, I, I am thinking of one more. One. So tell us about your reaction, assessment you know, regarding the performance in today's mock. I was not able to give uh, satisfactory answers to a few questions. Like there was a Khalistan issue. I was I didn't know what to say, and then there was question on uh, uh, prostitution also. Hmm. So that was another question. Okay, so Kanchan, uh, your performance has been quite good, quite good, very good. But uh, <clears throat> there is always scope for a betterment, improvement. First of all, I will go point by point. When I asked you about a value starting with the letter K, you could have easily said kindness, isn't it? Exactly. Kindness is inherent in everyone. So that was a simple question, but you could have thought about it slightly. <laughs> Even sometimes you can talk about knowledge. Knowledge may not be strictly a value, but uh, kindness definitely could fit into that. Hmm? The name of the film was Murder on the Orient Express. So since you have written as in your hobby, so some of the most famous novels of at least three, that is Arthur Conan Doyle, Agatha Christie, and uh, the third one being, uh, yeah, so, so mainly, mainly Agatha Christie and uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, and who have uh, talked about Hercule Poirot and uh, Miss Marple and Sherlock Holmes. You can make a study about that. Uh, Coming to Delhi, Delhi pose has got a number of bundle of problems. So study about Delhi. Delhi the problem would be problem of pollution. It is a literally gas chamber now. Problem of traffic congestion. That is why odd even scheme was uh, you know carried on for quite some time. Problem of garbage disposal. Stubble burning with adjoining states, attacks on women, the spat between the lieutenant governor and the state, gov state government, 
So these are some of the problems. So you please study historical, cultural, religious, political, socio-economic aspects of Delhi. Hmm? Villages around Delhi, at least some of the villages you know about them. When we talk about village, please do study 73rd and 74th amendment in the constitution which talks about decentralized governance. What are the official and unofficial actors at the three tiers that is at panchayat, at block level and at Sila Parishad level. Same thing about urban local bodies. So how many urban local bodies are in Delhi, NDMC, MCD, what is their role, what is their purpose, how they are elected, some of the recent controversies also relating to the election to this. So do study about Delhi. Coming to sociology, you were able to answer the questions quite well. And uh, but you need to study foreign policy. We did not ask any question on foreign policy. But do study the journey of foreign policy in respect of this country right from 1947 till today. What are the important landmarks, different years during which the foreign policy of India underwent a change, a kind of a disruptive foreign policy changes which took place. There are six major uh, changes. You can read about that. Elementary things like what is a high commission, what is a, uh, uh, you know, the different formats of, uh, so there can be, which you have uh, in the foreign, so that consulate and embassy, so study those things also. Then Russia-Ukraine war, what is the advantage to India? Can India be the mediator? Our position in the, as a permanent member of the Security Council, arguments in favor of that. Do you see any end to the Russia-Ukraine war? What is going to be once the war ends? What are the challenges before Ukraine? Can India come to the rescue of Ukraine in terms of rehabilitation? What are the problems which are being faced by the world? It can be problem of climate change. So relation to the G20 summit, the IPCC reports, the climate adaptation, the COP27, creation of a fund, UNC, UNFCCC, UNEP, some of these institutions relating to the climate change prepare well. SDG, MDG, India's ranking in that. Global index relating to hunger, happiness, pollu, pollu, uh, corruption, prepare them. Problem of migration, problem of terrorism, problem of AIDS, problem of drugs, which are now in front of all the nations. India and its relation with its neighbors. So, particularly Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, study them in Greek. And then do study something relating to the, our own country. That is good governance principle. Go through them. The citizen-centric administration. What are, how will you bring about a change in the administration? Number one, corruption. How will you bring it down? Responsiveness, public grievances. How will you improve that? What is consensus building? What is participatory? What is inclusivity? So the eight tenets of good governance, which were enunciated by the World Bank, go through them and understand their meaning. Try to give examples in respect of every answer that you give. Try to give. If no as, as examples are available, it's another thing. The fact which I mentioned to you about the women's situation in civil services was the factual thing. So your answer was partly right. Uh, that these departments also uh, are, they provide good challenge and they are in good departments. But the fact of the matter is that women need to occupy those core sectors also, which are not generally given in this kind of a men dominated world. Okay. So you will have to say, yes, some states have this tendency. Some states are more liberal. They do give positions to this rather than only accepting the fact that uh, these are also good postings, so we will be contented with that. Why? You are in, going to become a civil servant. You should definitely uh, move in the same hand, you know, shoulder to shoulder with the men world. You must, you are capable enough to occupy those positions which hitherto have been occupied by men. Okay. Then economics, skill, uh, 
now skill uh, skill you must give pros and cons to everything now skill was a very good idea a skill uh, development but somehow prepare the results also how far we have been able to you see we have been talking about the uh, demographic dividend right no? but what demographic dividend will do if there is the kind of unemployment which is prevailing in the country so we need to examine the the skill development uh, ministry whether it has re really yielded re results or not okay so go through that also please do go through all the public policies of the government for example the atmanirbhar bharat why it has become necessary to be self reliant in the world today we are gradually looking inwards every country is looking inwards they want to first take care of their own citizens and we are therefore in a way moving away from globalization towards a deglobalization that is why india had to think about atmanirbhar bharat to become independent to become self dependent so prepare on that and then of course uh, your uh, hobbies include reading novels so prepare one good novel which you have recently studied what is the moral message of that novel okay every question related to that novel watching anime that also you can prepare and uh, then of course rudra prayag and uttarakhand what are the strengths and weaknesses of uttarakhand why there is a need for having a second capital what is its sufficiency in terms of power in terms of road in terms of other infrastructure so prepare well on the strengths and weaknesses of uttarakhand and particularly also rudra prayag the historical the cultural the religious political importance of that this is uh, basically uh, something that is dependent on your uh, daf but there are some other things like constitution read constitution you have only 7 days you can't read the entire constitution go through the salient points okay questions relating to president vice president fundamental rights fundamental duties basic structure of the constitution the the preamble article 226 article 32 some of the important articles go through them and then gs2 gs3 gs4 paper gs4 paper will give you an idea about the ethical dilemmas so sometimes questions may be asked you become the collector of uh, uh, rudra prayag what are your priority areas how will you deal a situation which has developed like in joshi math so you will have to you know come out with some ingenuity in giving your answers what will you do to ensure that the women in your district uh, they they are safe you know while they are moving about so hypothetical questions prepare and uh, then of course the role of united nations in in uh, ensuring world order that again is there and uh, certain things connected with current affairs privatization asset monetization pipeline ppp model success of that some of the important indicators so budget and economic survey of india please do read about some of the important institutions which support the government like reserve bank of india sebi icsi icai election commission of india competition commission of india and niti aayog can go through that this will probably give you a fairly good exposure to almost everything and just to say again your performance was very good but we would like you to become outstanding and you stand a very good chance of attaining very good marks our best wishes to you but if you have any questions you can ask us yes sir the question related to uh, if i am a consular general in san francisco yeah. so what should have been my approach You see, whatever you said was correct. Only thing what uh, uh, you need as a person in that position, you, you, what is important is for you to have a vision and foresee what could happen. So, based on what was happening in Australia and England, there was earlier also that the Khalistanis had done similar thing in the Indian High Commission in London. So, based on what is happening uh, in other places. you could have also added certain preventive actions that you could have seen could have taken by asking the host country for a little more protection of your consulate the rest of course whatever you said is correct that's what one point but you have to add. remove that flag immediately if someone has put a flag on your on your you know office the first thing has to be done is to get it removed that also the first thing okay 
So that any other broken window theory is there in criminology. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. That if you allow it hmm. to persist, then more chaos ensues. Hmm. So correct it immediately. You know the various. If you have read Tipping Point, that book hmm. that used to make graffitis on the trains, and the overnight the trains used to be repainted. So they gave up then. It was pointless if nobody can see the graffiti. Hmm. Yes, so the first thing was to remove it. Yes, sir. You can't allow because less people will start seeing that, hmm. and they will form an opinion about it. And you insist that those perpetrators of those activities are brought to book and punished. You know, Identified and yeah. demarch. It's already been done. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I'll do also read because that question. relates to an inter- internal security challenge hmm. so what are the internal security challenge we are facing and also the policies in respect of women children senior citizens scheduled caste scheduled tribes go through them also thank you sir all the best to you thank you thank you, thank you. an academy let's crack it